Hey guys, M2 Collector here with another figure review. Next up is the Hasbro Marvel Legends series Spider-Man Homecoming Target exclusive Marvel's Vulture Adrian Toomes. This is a re-release, a repaint, redeco, whatever deluxe release of the Build-A-Figure, well, kind of figure and Build-A-Figure wings flight gear. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all confusing. Most deluxe figures are around the 30 bucks, especially when it comes in this type of packaging. This is a $40 figure or $41.49, whatever weird pricing they have now. Um, Target exclusive. Now, I, a few people have asked me, well, what's up with the price? Why isn't it 30 bucks? Um, and, and I think, and I think the reason, whether you agree or not, or like it or not, it is what it is, but $30 would be basic deluxe figure that was maybe a build a figure. Okay, cool. The wings were the build a figure. The f the vulture figure himself was remember that was a single release for 20 bucks. So you had 20 bucks plus the build a figure, the wings, the flight gear. Um, so the flight gear essentially would be like $30 and then the vulture figure would be like 10 when you think of it that way in terms of this packaging. Whether uh, again, whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, um, it is what it is. It does suck, yes, paying 40 plus dollars for a figure that has released before, but you also don't have to buy it. It's a Target exclusive. These are what the exclusive should be, right? Everyone gets mad when like a popular character, a popular figure that everybody wants is a store exclusive. They can't get it, they can't find it, they get mad. I completely understand. But in this case, it's not necessarily one that everybody wants, or if you have that version, you maybe you don't want the repaint. So it works out, right? This is how, this is what exclusives should be. Correct me if I'm wrong. You, would you guys agree or not? Um, but let me know your thoughts on that. Before we even get into the video, go ahead, guys, go ahead and start commenting, because I'm gonna be curious. Um, looking at this figure in package, without even taking it out and looking at this, this guy, I can tell you right now, I think the legs are like almost completely new. I, I think, you know, the, the, the right at that thigh, upper thigh piece where it meets the hip and crotch. Um, I think those are reused, but like the thighs, knees down, feet, feet, I don't know yet. I think that's all new. So there's actually a lot of new parts on here. We get some new accessory pieces. So some really cool things. So I'll be doing a little bit of a, 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 a comparison. Excuse me. Um, I don't know how in depth I'm gonna get into this review. It's probably gonna end up being super long because when I say it's gonna be short, I end up going way over. But some new accessories and things like that. We get the Spider-Man Homecoming movie logo there because it is Spider-Man Homecoming. It is not Spider-Man No Way Home. It is simply just an opportunity to re-release older figures at a time where there is a Spider-Man movie. I'm not even mad at it. Looking at the side artwork there, we get Adrian Toomes from Spider-Man Homecoming. As you can see, the figure matches this particular look of Vulture there. We get that same image on the back. Here we have the wings all spread out. The bio reads, with an impressive flying apparatus, Adrian Toomes soars through the skies to threaten Spider-Man. And threaten him, he does. But anyway, again, Target exclusive. I'll link in the video description below so you can check uh, the Target site and Target app to see if your local store has it or if it pops up in stock i ordered mine online it has not yet quite hit my town hit one town over but not not at my local or closest target yet but um i'm away three and a half minutes I, i've been talking a bunch so let's just hurry up and let's get this thing out of the package i will show you how it looks in the tray and then i i guess i'll piece it together on video for you guys okay so here is the tray so the top layer of the tray has the vulture figure and the accessories and then this other layer seems to kind of be stuck in there. Whoops. Whoops. So here with the turbines, um, this one is actually already attached to his back because it does port on into the back. So they went ahead and did that. And then also had a tray in there to protect it. We'll just kind of drop that off. Um, he does come with the stand. This is the same stand piece that came with the Vulture figure from that Homecoming um, Vulture's Flight Gear Build-A-Figure set. And then here we have this last tray which has um, a couple of the different wing pieces there. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it all out. Um, and then we'll kind of put the wings together and then we'll go over the differences of the figure, check out his articulation um, and all that good stuff. 
Okay, so here's the Vulture figure. So we're gonna kind of piece it together. So these, the turbines already come attached to this first back piece. And looking at some of the color differences, I wanna kind of go over this real quick while we're here. So the blue, the bright turqu um, sky blue, baby blue color uh, goes from the gradient from the green into the blue and then into a dark purple. That's to kind of show like the blast fire effect as he's um, kind of flying through. The turbines get this blue color. I don't remember them being blue in the movie. So I do think this is a bit odd but the cool thing here is that if you notice like actually in the center they make it look dirty right they give it like the sh the shading wash type look there on the blades of the turbine um, towards the center so not like a full around but kind of around there and that is actually a really nice touch where I think it makes a big difference that kind of helps bring out some of the details so in terms of paint apps that is pretty good because they could have just as easily not done that and they actually is on both sides so that is pretty cool we get this nice matte green on there i really love the fact that it's this matte color and it's not shiny or anything like that same goes for the blue and the purple it's a nice matte uh finish to it so that is pretty cool we get a little bit of green in there because i'm guessing that little bit will kind of show on the fate on on the wings when it's on vulture's back and it looks like we actually had that previously before as well uh, but looking to attach these pieces so if you notice here there is like this clip mechanism and we get this clip mechanism here trying to think do I have this right and I do not which side is this is that right that is not right so let's go with this one here no here we go so we're gonna clip this that should be on the outside so we're gonna just kind of clip that piece together clip that piece together clip that piece together like so so it attaches like there. We get the other side to do the same. So we're gonna put that towards the back and then you can see kind of how the mechanism to put this together, that's how it can kind of be articulated as well. So you kind of get the fold there. And then the same with the turbines, you can fold it out as well. So here we have those wings now together like so. Looking at these wings, we get this nice matte finish there as well. I will do a comparison from wing to wing, see if there's any um, paint uh, application differences or anything between them. As you can see here, we get this last wing piece with these blades outwards. Would have been nice if they did some more coloring in here, but for now we just kind of get that matte green in some certain areas on the back. There seems to be a lot. This front side here, which would be visible, not nearly as much, but the sculpted detail is really nice. But man, if we could have gotten a little bit more color variation in there, would have been really, really nice. But unfortunately we did not yet again because it looks like the paint is the same in all areas it's just a nicer green um, that they use and then here we have this piece and you can see it articulates that way so that is pretty cool that piece is already attached on there and then we're going to just clip that piece in there like so and it fits on there it's a little loose like that i don't remember that being so much like that before but it's the same piece. They didn't change the sculpt, anything on that. We just get a new head and some new legs on the figure. Sculpt that other piece there. And there we have the wings. We have his stand so we can actually kind of plop this into the stand now and the stand will actually hold the wing. So we'll keep that in the background as we take a closer look at the figure and the accessories. Okay, so taking a closer look at the Vulture figure, this visor piece is removable. So actually out of the package, um, I did place it on there because it comes with it off. And as you can see there, you can see this like real menacing looking face mask there. And I'm trying to think, they're a very similar design between the two, but there are some noticeable differences, not a whole lot. But there are some. The greens are essentially the same, a little bit different. We got this weird, like, bronzish gunmetal color of a helmet on the first release, which was this one here. Uh, but this new one, it just kind of goes into black. We see glowing green eyes there, a little bit of silver around the jaw piece. Um, the tubing there, it is silver at the connector. And then the tube is just kind of free-flowing. Um, it doesn't go down any further. It's kind of glued right at the back of his head. 
there we had two like tubes that just kind of went to the side of the helmet and didn't really go anywhere this visor piece was not removable it was glued on you couldn't remove it he's got large glowing green eyes on there the mouthpiece kind of seemed a little bit larger um, so this new Vulture one has a very different look and again the visor piece um, is removable I'm not exactly sure why they would do that why not just leave it on there because anytime he Adrian Toomes you know Michael Keaton oops lost the visor had kind of removed it his face was exposed damn straight up lost that visor especially not good when it's the same damn color as the carpet that thing's gone um, so don't lose yours guys um, another key difference there is the feathering, um, the feathering, the the feathers, the ruffles around the coat, this bomber jacket. Uh, we get a nice wash in here to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. Whereas this one had a different layer, like a lighter dark, like a lighter color wash that didn't really work out too well. You couldn't really tell, but we get a nice wash here. Uh, the jacket is much brighter brown um, as opposed to a very dark brown here um, on this one and then we get green straps as opposed to black straps um, this one had some gold we don't really get the gold in here so much it kind of blends in with the green so even if there is some you can't really tell uh, some of the mechanic pieces of like the the exoskeleton type suit you can see they just went with this like bronzish type color whereas on the new one we get a lot of silvers we get some greens a little bit of gold in there as well whereas this one was just kind of all the same solid color the old one, the, the belt was black, and then we kind of got that bronze color for the pouches there on the side. This new one, we kind of stick with all silver color as it goes all the way down the legs to the feet. So the legs are very different. The upper legs and the lower legs are different, whereas the feet are the same. So these claw talon uh, type feet, they are a different color. We got that bronzish color here. We will go with a more of a silver color, but we get a little bit of black in there as well. Um, and then for the boots, a little bit of black. We get lighter green pants as opposed to darker green pants. And again, you could see more of the pants themselves because they are new sculpted um, on there. We get new knee pads, which kind of show some damage on the knees. So that is pretty cool. You get some two-tone color in there. So that's definitely a nice touch. There are some nice um, additions to the paint details and things like that on there. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out that I don't really care for is if you look at the arms, the lower torso, and the upper torso, the upper torso has a more shiny um, paint, brown paint to it, whereas the sleeves and then here in the torso piece, it's more of a matte color. Um, right here under the waist, we get a little bit more of that shiny brown paint. So it just kind of sticks out a little bit. It's not terrible, um, but you know, it is it is noticeable that, you know, I'd want to point that out. Um, another big addition to this figure are these accessory pieces. So the, the way Vulture had kind of um, controlled the wings and things like that, he used this, you know, whole apparatus that kind of went up and around his arm. Um, and he held on to these pieces here to really help kind of control the wings. Um, so we actually have that here. And the way it looks like it's going to work is you're going to have to pop the hand off because the way this is going to go, so you pop the hand off there and then you can kind of position it over the arm. So match up where the elbow would be. Then you have the hand in there and then you're just going to then peg in the hand and that's going to hold in place like so. And then with this floating piece here, you're going to put that fit. Whoop, you're going to whoop, keep dropping it. Nice gold paint there at the, at the end as well. Um, but we got to work this into Adrian Toomes' hand. So then he is like controlling the wings there. So that is actually a nice touch. Um, they got away with not having to sculpt a new arm by just adding on these pieces and I think it works well You know you then because then you don't have a vulture that has permanently has these things over his arms If you want to have just the vulture by himself Then you could just simply remove this when he's not in flight mode So that is pretty cool and of course there are two sets because you can get one for each arm So we'll pop, pop that in Like so we'll fit that over. We'll get the hand pegged back in there and then we got the other piece there and again these are the same exact pieces and we're going to fit that into adrian tombs is hand if i can work it on there and then boom like so so now we have the vulture prepared to use his wings and control the wings with these um, arm pieces there 
And again, we have a big ass peg hole there on the back um, that you would get the wings and you would just simply port it onto his back like so. And then the way the stand works, the stand is essentially the right size that you can use the stand to help hold him up and kind of stand there. But he should actually have enough balance to where you don't need that stand and he can freely stand on his own like so. So there is the comparison between the two figures. Now let's do a quick comparison of the wings. Okay, so looking at the two wings again, the one on the stand is the new one. The previous one has the same exact paint applications, but different shades of green, and it's better applied on the new wing set versus this one. It got kind of sloppy and chipped off in some areas, and I don't think that's something that you're gonna have to worry about with this new one, but on this one, you know, it was definitely a problem, and it just wasn't clean in certain areas. Um, so there is that difference. Again, the turbines are a completely different color. We get that blue color on that one. And I want to say maybe the blue colors to shine, kind of show the glow effect as they're spinning and he's in flight mode. At least that's what I'm kind of, kind of go with. Um, these ones just had a light gray. I didn't think they looked bad in any way, but so just a heads up on that. We got that same turquoise into purple gradient. We got a much better like overspray type look here to really show the glow of it. Um, whereas we do not get that whatsoever on this figure. And I think that's something that the previous wings um, definitely did a better job at, was at least kind of giving, making it have that glow uh, type of effect. Damn, these wings are all so wide. It's kind of getting in the way and everything. So just to kind of get in for a closer look for you guys, so you can see the overspray of the purple and the turquoise in there uh, to really give it that glow look. Whereas the new one, again, it's just a flat color. We do not get that. Um, another thing here is you see the green, there was some areas where they didn't paint um, the new one, that back piece just, it gets painted fully there. They didn't even bother to not paint in some of those areas and I don't mind it. Uh, but that's really the differences, um, the differences there. You know, when I was looking at the wing piece earlier and I was looking at like that swivel there, what would be the point of that? So if you do that, that has actually a really good look for the wings right there. And that actually probably looks even better. Um, but then you, you know, you lose out on that articulation point or, you know, if you do that, it doesn't necessarily make sense with how you would get him to fly. But I actually really like the way that looks um, when you do that, even like from this angle inside, that does look really cool. So... I actually really like that and I may stick kind of with this look for the wings because then it's not going to be so wide because um, what I what I think I'm going to do now is display this new vulture with the wings and then the old vulture I'll just kind of pack these wings away um, and just display him oh these wings are so damn wide and get in the way I'll display this one like this but then this guy is going to be um, full uh, decked fully decked out with the wings one thing I just now noticed, there's actually some silver paint on there to kind of show a little bit of scratching and weathering to that front face plate. Um, so that is actually a little bit of a nice touch. You know, it's pretty subtle in there, uh, but it's pretty cool. You know, years ago, I feel like the stand would hold the figure nicely and he can kind of stand um, with it. It, it. I don't really feel like that so much anymore because now it feels like the feet um, are just kind of... He's, he stands a little tall, and then the back of the talons want to hit the stand. I don't really remember it being that much of an issue before, unless I'm doing it wrong and it's supposed to go this way, but no, see, that doesn't even work. I guess it kind of does, but then the stand isn't really doing anything, so... You know, the figure, again, he will hold up with the wings, so that's really not not an issue. You know, you still got to get, it's still a matter of balancing him out, making sure the legs are straight. There we go. And getting him to balance. He's leaning forward a little bit, but, he, you know, he is, he is balancing. But I think this is a really good look, the way the wings are folded. Uh, like that, I actually, I'm actually a really big fan. Um, I love the color difference of the new figure. I think that's going to be the big highlight. The wings are really not a big deal. Um, the green is nice. Yes, the turquoise helps get it to to really stand out, but I think it was unnecessary. But the updates to the vulture figure are really nice. I love the green because it matches. You know, the green pants match the wings. 
Um, it just gives it a better look aesthetically. Um, whereas again, I didn't have any problems with this fig this vulture figure whatsoever. Yes, it wasn't like super accurate or anything like that. You know, it almost looked like he had like all mechanical legs kind of thing or that armor was just really tight around his legs. Um, so it's nice to get the updated legs on this one. The accessories over the arms, the mechanical pieces there to control the wings is definitely a nice touch. So when you have the figure and you could display it like this, um, I, I think that looks really, really cool. You know, if you pair it up with the Hasbro flight stand, um, this is actually pretty cool. You can get some cool poses with him or depending on if you use other type of stands or if you use like the, the wire hook type um, type stand um, that I've seen, you know, people have made and people have sold, um, you know, you just kind of hide it into the hip piece there. But I think there's some really cool things that you could do with this vulture figure, you know, with these new, these new hand pieces, it, you know, it helps kind of give it some, uh, give it a nice look to it. Uh, you got to balance the stand. I turned those wings in it threw off the balance. Uh, but you know depending on how you do it you can do some really cool things with this vulture figure and I think it just looks um, Better it looks a little bit more um, You know definitely more accurate when it comes to like the suit and the look for vulture uh, But there's some really cool things that you can do with this guy Okay, so I'll quickly go through the articulation, which I know this video is probably getting really long. So you got the, the point of articulation here where you can kind of fold it in, fold it out. The turbine itself, you can kind of fold in and out. And then the turbine here can also kind of swing um, around and then it, do, it can spin as well. And then here again, you can kind of twist and, and swivel that piece of the wing. Either way you'd like, you can fold it in or you can fold it out as well. And again, that's the same um, on both sides. But again, that's that's my favorite look there. Okay, now for the vulture figure himself on his articulation. So he can look down that much. He can look up. Um, he can't really look up. So that's a problem when come kind of going into flight mode. So that kind of is difficult. You get a swivel in there, but the jacket gets in the way, so you can't really do a full swivel. Not a whole lot of pivot going on in there as well. Shoulder, you can get to go up that much, basically straight on out. Full rotation, of course, upper bicep swivel. You get a double jointed elbow uh, like so. So a little bit more than 90 degrees. Not terrible, but not all that great. Wrist swivel, and we do have a hinge um, here. When you have the accessory piece on there you can still articulate the elbow but then it's going to kind of look a little bit funny where you have a little bit of gap in between like the bicep and where that would be because this doesn't articulate with it at all so just a heads up on that I wanted to show you guys that we have an ab crunch so we can crunch forward that much not a whole lot you can go back a little bit so that's pretty good you do have a waist swivel in there legs go out that far apart like so he can kick forward that high it's basically straight out not too bad goes back a little bit you have an upper thigh cut in there. You get a double jointed knee, which I just realized is a pinless knee. Uh, so that is actually pretty good. So on the pins, no pins on the inside, uh, no pins on the outside. We get that nice shiny silver armor, um, exoskeleton type of deal there. Uh, there is no boot swivel or anything like that, but the foot hinges all the way down. You get some hinge going up, ankle pivot, and you do have a peg hole there at the bottom of the feet. Would have been really cool if there was some some form of articulation in there to you can kind of replicate these talon feet like grabbing onto something. That would have been a really nice touch. Okay, so I essentially finished recording the video and I realized I never even showed him next to Spider-Man. So um, this clip may seem kind of out of place, but um, here he is next to Spider-Man. I didn't have any of my other ones because they were kind of buried and I kind of searched um, and I wanted to do it quickly because it's about midnight. Right now I'm getting tired and I still have to edit the video. Uh, but there is Spider-Man next to Vulture. And one thing that I didn't mention, yes, he does not come with an unhelmeted Michael Keaton, Adrian Toomes head sculpt. My understanding is that Michael Keaton does not sign off on his likeness um, for merchandise. That is not something that is necessarily always going to be the case because I'm sure there are other things out there that use his likeness in some fashion with like Batman figures, 89 Batman figures. So I don't know essentially what it is. Maybe the cost and licensing fee for his his, li his likeness is extremely high. I don't know. That's my understanding for Jake Gyllenhaal as well, which is why the Marvel Legends version did not get an unmasked head sculpt. Years ago, there was something floating around Facebook of a Michael Keaton head cast that was for sale on eBay from sellers in China. Whether that was a prototype type of deal that never got to full production as it was not 
you know, didn't receive any kind of final approval or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but there was a head sculpt out there that did look exactly like Michael Keaton from Spider-Man Homecoming that did look fantastic. You got to watch the balancing on this guy. I've been messing with him quite a bit over, you know, during the video. Um, so there are casts out there that you can find, whether people had those ones that they had bought from eBay or people have made their own. Those are options and I do get it, you know, 40 plus dollars for a repaint, um, with no unmasked head sculpt. I get it. Um, it sucks, but I don't, I just don't think we're ever going to get a Michael Keaton head sculpt on any figure. So say Vulture does make a future appearance in the MCU and we get another figure, um, I just don't see it happening. I don't think it's going to happen. And that does suck. But anyway, Spider-Man, Vulture next to each other. Okay, so that is my review of the Vulture figure. I know it was probably lengthy as hell, and my apologies for that. I wanted to try and get as in-depth as possible um, and showing you guys the differences between the two figures. If you did not get the original release of the Vulture and the build of wings and, and put that all together, um, this is an absolute must-have. In my opinion, as an MCU collector that loves movie figures, it's a must-have. But if you do have this version and the wings all completed, this figure is not necessary. Yes, it is updated. Yes, it is more film accurate. Yes, we get a new head sculpt. Yes, we get the new arm accessories. Yes, we get new legs. Those are awesome. But are they really necessary? Not for everyone. For some folks, yes, that absolutely must have the film accuracy um, in action figure form. Or if you're completist like me, of course, you're going to get it no matter what. I think it's cool that they revisited a movie from years ago at this point. I don't even remember what year the movie had come out. Was it 2015? Maybe 2016? Um, so four or five years ago or whenever it was. And that was the, like the second wave of figures that I had reviewed, which was pretty crazy, you know, at the time. And I think I got a fair amount of views from those, from those figures. So that's a real throwback to go back there. So I may put like at the end of this video, you may see a link to this review, which is probably absolute garbage but you can see how far i've come since those days and hopefully um you could see a big difference for the better uh but anyway um a must have if you don't have the original release if you do have the original release this new one is an easy pass i don't know how popular it's really going to be at target it seems to sell out pretty quickly online but you know take a look at the stores use the app use pop finder to try and see if your local stores ha might have it or keep an eye online maybe set a notification with you know if it goes in stock you can pick it up but i'm really happy with it the legs are really awesome i love the new colors because it looks so much better it bright it really stands out looks more realistic whereas this is like super futuristic looking um so it's just really cool but you guys let me know down in the comments below what are your thoughts on this vulture figure i for one am very pleased and happy uh, but i know not everyone will be it is an exclusive figure this is the type of thing that exclusive figures should be right not uh, not necessarily a new figure it's a repaint with some new stuff and some retooling uh, but, you know, it's not an absolute necessary figure because they did have one released before. And that's what it really exclusive should be all about. So hopefully you guys can understand it from that perspective and, and kind of go for it. If not, that's okay too. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this Vulture figure. Um, are you picking it up? Are you going to pass? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.